Hey everybody, thank you for clicking on this video. I appreciate your support. Please subscribe. It'll help my channel out a lot. So I found a new magazine um, out there and it's called Electronics, in Electronics Today International. And I never knew anything about it. I'm glad I found it because it is a gold mine. I mean, I just checked a couple of issues out and tons and tons of projects uh, to build. And for those that are new, that's what I do. I take old electronic magazines, take the project from there, and I bring them to life. So today what we're going to do is we're going to build a 20 watt amplifier. So I'm hoping it'll turn out and uh, let me give you an idea of what the author's version of that looks like. Okay, so I'm showing you the actual author's version or the outcome of their amplifier. In fact, it was on the cover page, which I just showed you that was in color. And um, not much to it, to be honest with you. There's a bass and a treble control and a balance and a, and a volume. And then, of course, the source. What source are you amplifying, right? So there's a whole bunch of options on the back. And um, right now I'm just showing you the actual inside of the amplifier. So, I mean, I hope to have something very similar. We have to be very careful of uh, grounds and noise, of course, especially when it comes to the phono input. So we'll have to use some shielded cable and uh, we'll be cognizant of that. Power supply is built in there too. And in fact, speaking of the power supply, I'll show you the schematic for that. It's not too much unusual about this thing. Um, it's got uh, plus and minus 28 volt uh, supply and it's got a relay or a speaker cutoff or uh, gosh, I can't remember the word for that. Um, anyway, it's to delay the speaker outputs coming on until the power supply reaches its full power. A speaker protection, that's what it is. So it's got a relay on there, and um, I just happen to have one too, so that works out great. Let me uh, just to bring you back into the uh, schematics. Okay, so right now I'm showing you the pre-amplifier section. And in fact, the first section on the left is for the phono stage and that has to amplify a very very low level signal as we already know and they then there's a selector switch in the middle so that's you know your phono your tape auxiliary etc and then after that comes the next portion of the uh, pre-amplifier so we're using LM301s for this particular uh, project. And uh, the actual amplifier stage itself, I'm showing you that now. It there, There's a emitter follower up front, and then there's a whole bunch of pre-driver transistors, and then you have your finals, um, which are the TIP TIP transistors. Now, i got to be honest with you, I don't um, completely understand it right now, how exactly it works. I get the idea. I know how amplifier works. This is a Class B, by the way. So there is no current flowing uh, when there's no signal. It just, uh, when your signal uh, appears on the actual pre-drivers and finals, then it starts to conduct, of course. Now, what I'm going to do is when all this is done, um, I'm sure there's going to be a problem or two. So I'm going to have to troubleshoot. And that's where I learn. That's where I understand a lot more on how a circuit works. So that's what I'll be doing with this one, too. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's a 20 watt per channel amplifier, and uh, I've got a uh, noise and distortion meter that I built a few episodes ago, so we can check the uh, distortion on it if there is any. Well, there should be. And uh, we'll see how it works. I'll put it on the scope, I'll demonstrate it to you. But first, we have to build it. So let's get going with that. Okay, so I've got most of the parts. And yeah, it took like, I swear to God, just got, getting all these parts from these bins up here and over there and everywhere. I probably spent at least a good half a day trying to find all the parts because you need the exact components, right? In any event, I do have most of them. I did have to order some of the parts and they should be here within a couple of days. Uh, but I've got plenty to do in the meantime. So what I need to do next is I have to put these traces here onto this blank printed circuit board. It's just copper clad on a fiberglass board. And when I iron on these, uh, this, this circuit or the traces, it'll uh, imprint onto the board. And then I'll use some etchant to actually remove all of the copper, except for the black lines here. And that's how we get our PCB boards or printed circuit boards. 
and um, then we can, uh, you know, go through all the motions of drilling and put the components in. But let's first uh, get the board done. So I'll do that. I'll cut this board uh, to the size that I require. And then um, I'll, I'll bring it back in when I put the transfer onto the board. So for those that are new, what I do is I use a laminator. I, it's basically like making a t-shirt, although you're putting it through a laminator. So when I print out the printed circuit board on a piece of paper, I use Staples glossy paper and you have to use a laser printer. And what happens is the black, all the black on your letters and all these traces and whatever, it's actually plastic, believe it or not, fine plastic that goes on the paper. And the good thing is, is I can actually melt that plastic and put it on a PC board. And that's what toner transfer method is. And this is a laminator, of course. Anyway, let's um, get this. Uh, I'm going to transfer it a couple more times. So I just want to make sure it's really well. And then I put it in some cold water and then the paper should peel off. So I'll bring it back in at that point. Okay, so I got the uh, paper off of the board after the lamination or the transfer, the toner transfer. You'll see some paper still left over on the traces. That's fine. Uh, when I put it in the etch, and it'll etch properly. There's not an issue. I just wanted to point out one thing. If anybody is involved or wants to make this project, let alone any project, from the magazines. So there's two versions of the magazine, usually, not all the time, but there's all, there's always World Radio History webpage, and so they'll have the magazines, but I find the quality of those are uh, less than another site. And the other site is um, archive.org. So if you go there, you'll find, uh, hopefully find the same magazine and they scanned the uh, images of the pages much better. So what I found is I'll go to the archive.org webpage and get the, um, uh, get the PC board design, right? And then I'll cut that and put it into the photo editor and edit if I have to. However, this one I did not have to edit, which was great other than, you know, change the brightness and the contrast. So just a little tip for anybody that's interested uh, in building circuit boards uh, from magazines. Anyway, let's put this in the etching. Okay, just to update, I want to bring you back in. I got the board in the etchant, as you can see on the right. Now, the board was so big that um, it wouldn't fit in the Pyrex bowl that I normally use. Uh, so what I had to do first is fill up the Pyrex bowl, put it on the heater or the heating element, and bring it up to temperature and then pour that uh, etchant into the plastic container that you're seeing right now. So anyway, it's going and it's brand new etching too, by the way. So hopefully things look good. And uh, if for those that are new, you can see that I've built a fume hood here. I've just got two computer fans at the top with some flexible ducting that goes out to the window. So that's it. I'll bring it back in once the board's done. Okay, that worked out extremely well, as you could see. Uh, just one open trace. It's, I think, right there. It's hard to point. Yeah, right there. And there's a suspect trace up here. Maybe it, it's actually got continuity, but I'll just patch that up. Anyway, otherwise, board looks fantastic. I'm really happy with it. So the next step is to drill it out and then start to populate it. And I'll bring it back in. So I've got the board pretty much complete um, for a test, at least anyway. Obviously, you know, I've got, the, well, I've got some speaker uh, terminal uh, block here so I can hook up some speakers to the amplifier. Um, but, you know, there's the inputs, right? So they've got uh, five, uh, no, four different inputs, right? So I still have to hook that up. But what I want to do for testing 
is just keep it simple, right? So I'm going to take an input and that's where these two wires come into play. So a uh, ground and then the left or right, I don't know which one's which, and the same with the other one. And just to see if I get an output. So keep it simple. Um, put a put a signal into the preamp portion of the circuit and see if it works. Now I did find some problems. So by the way, this build has taken quite a bit uh, of my time. I don't know if any of you know, but I probably spend a good solid week um, getting the, the the whole thing built. You know, you've got to collect the parts, you've got to etch the board, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course, I've got you know things to do during the daytime too. So I'm you know I got to keep the the domestic situation under control too. In any event, <clears throat> I put a lot of time into this, and um, I I was extra careful this time in that uh, I, I double checked all the components I put in and I checked the wiring. I made sure all the pins were correct in terms of the transistors and capacitors. And even after that, I did find uh, one resistor down here. It, so it, it was supposed to be a hundred ohms and I had a, uh, I had a one ohm resistor in there because the circuit does use some one ohm resistors up there. Um, so it's good that I double checked. And of course I double checked all my solder connections and they were good. Um, and I fixed that trace that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So what I'm really trying to say is I'm trying to be more diligent on my projects and hopefully I'll have better success as, you know, as soon as I test it. And that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to put this on the bench and I'm going to put it, I'm going to power it up first to make sure I've got my voltages. And then after that, I'll put the IC chips in and we'll try and see if it works. All right. I'll bring it back in at that point. Okay. So I've got the board on the test bench and as you can see, it's powered up already. I've got it on a dim bulb and it's barely glowing, which is good. And, um, as you can see, it's powered on. So I did have a, a problem before I started this video, that LED and then this LED were reversed. So I just corrected that before this video. In any event, um, a nice blue LED. I got that from an organ. And, um, so I got my voltages. I got my, uh, 26, I think it is. Yeah. 26.77. And the positive side is here. 26.8 so pretty pretty close and it's the same with the other channel too so i've got all my rail voltages for the transistors um the ic's have their supply uh 12 volts uh they're on pin seven and four so positive is seven and negative is four <clears throat> so or ground is four so we're good with all the voltages the uh, transistors are not getting hot they're they're not even warm so that's that's a good uh, step forward right for the next uh next uh, phase which is going to be hooking it up to some speakers and putting an input signal in i think we're ready for that um step so let me get that set up and i'll bring it back in okay so good news and bad news the good news is that both channels are working in that i get a tone on my speaker however the bad news is the actual signal is horrible. So you can see that. <clears throat> so either I'm clipping at the very top or I don't have one rail voltage or something to do with that other side of the, uh, the power supply. But I do have voltage on both the rails. So um, I know it's there, but maybe the output transistors aren't, uh, aren't getting it. Not only that, but maybe it has something to do with the input too. So, now is the chance or the time where I go through the circuit. So I'm going to start at the preamp and work my way down and see where I'm losing the, the signal. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'll bring you back in once I uh, figure something out. Okay, so just bringing you back in. I've been troubleshooting why I'm getting that half wave signal. And it turns out that it's a power supply problem. Now, I haven't fixed it yet, but... Um, what was ha I thought the op amps were 12 volts and then ground. Apparently it's not. It's 12 plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts. So once I realized that, I then uh, checked some of the power supply. And sure enough, 
that xenodiode there is bad. It's, it's shorted. And I've already replaced it with a new one. And as soon as I power it up, it goes. It's a, it's a dead short. So the next step is to find out why that xenodiode is uh, shorting out. Bring it back in shortly. Okay, good news, everybody. I have found the problem. It was a dead shorted tantalum capacitor. And it's a brand new component. I, I guess I should have checked it. So lesson learned. Next time I'll make sure. I know tantalums have a bad reputation in the first place. But uh, next time I'll make sure that uh, the tantalums are good before I put them in a circuit. It caused me a lot of grief. And by the way, I did use that tantalum in another project. So I should actually double check and see if that one's good too. In any event, I replaced uh, the tantalum capacitor with another tantalum, which is good for now. And yeah, we're, we're working. So let me show you what it looks like on the scope. There we go. So I'm just increasing the volume right now. And you can see it clipping there, just back off on the clipping. And we're probably at about 25, 27 volts peak to peak. So we're, it's working. I, I've checked both channels and it's pretty similar. Uh, so I would call this a success. Now, here's the problem. I have to get a case for this thing. And the cases that I have right now just won't fit. Uh, so I have to get a new case, right? Um... I guess I could go Saturday. Today is Saturday. By the way, today's Saturday morning. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it, break it down into two parts, only because this video is getting a little long as it is. And what I want to do on part two is um, use that noise and distortion meter I built from Australian uh, magazine. I can't even remember. I uh, can't remember the name. Anyway, it's I've got a video a, a couple of videos ago showing that build. So I'll use that noise and distortion meter on this amplifier and I'll put it in a case and I know there are some shielding, especially for the phonograph input um, and you know, special grounding just so you don't have any ground loops or anything like that. So I want to make it nice and for me to do that in this one video, it would be a little bit too much. So I'll break, break it down to two parts. This will be part one, part two, I'll put it in a case and we'll do some testing and see what kind of um, output power we have and the noise and distortion on it. So that'll be it. So if you haven't seen some of my other videos, go check them out. And I've got lots of good builds. And we'll talk to you on the next part, part two. Bye for now.